Hello, 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 hello world. How's everybody? This is Louise Hicks, your host of Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour. And as you all know, I coin myself the mad black woman, and that is for motivated and determined to support and help elevate my community, the Black community, to a higher level of consciousness. And with that said, I want to go through briefly this video that I happened to come across the other day about Dr. Ben Carson and your Florida Congressman Byron Donalds who has been in the news about the Jim Crow conversation. And I did do a video about that as well. And hopefully you all watched it. So again, please subscribe, share, leave your comments, thumbs up. And let's listen to this conversation where President, former President, I should say, Trump, Donald Trump called in to speak with this group of black businessmen or business leaders, if you want to call them business leaders in Atlanta. And this ironically was the day prior to the great debate, if you want to call it that. So let's take a listen. And then I'm going to give my comments about this, uh, about this conversation they had that they called a round table. So let's go ahead and share it. And I will probably stop it at some point in it. And like I said, I won't be long. So again, Louise Hicks here, please share, leave your comments and let's have a dialogue here. So give me a moment here and I'm going to share this round table discussion where Allegedly, it was a surprise. However, I don't think it was a surprise. I think it was most likely staged. But here we go. <laughs> Thank you all for all your support and the new subscribers I've gotten. Thank you all. And please, again, like I said, share, 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 because we need to get the news out as to what's going on in our community. So, Let's share this video. And let's see what's going on here. Okay. Didn't come up and give me a moment. Let's see what's going on with it. It should have popped up here. Sometimes those things happen. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, actually, hold on. Hello. 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 Hey, Mr. President. Mr. President, how you doing? Well, I'm going to put you on speaker, but actually a great question just came up. We're talking about regulations and some of the things that can be done to alleviate the, the regulation burdens on a lot of businesses. But I'm going to put you on speakerphone for everybody to hear. Hold on a second. All right, everybody, you're on with the president. Hello, Mr. Hey, president. Mr. Hey, sir. president. Hello, Hello, everybody. It's great to be with you. I hope I'm being well represented. I have a feeling I am. I know them very well. So I hope so. No, you are, sir. But well, a question came up about regulations. And so what's your view of what we need to do with regulations uh, when you come back into office? Well, as you know, I cut taxes and regulations more than any other president. We had the biggest tax cut, and bigger even than the Reagan tax cuts. And I also cut regulations far more than any other president. And they, put, they have put a lot of them back already. We will get them cut so fast. And, you know, it's very interesting when I went to business leaders and said, which was more important, these big tax cuts or these big regulation cuts? Almost every one of them said regulation cuts, and it made a big difference to their businesses, small businesses and big businesses. Great question. 
Awesome. Anybody else got a question for the president? I mean, I, 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 want, I want to tell him that black folk will vote for him to get gas under a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Mr. President, the, 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 the statement, I'm not going to call it a question, the statement is, black folks are voting for you if you get gas under a dollar. <laughs> no, well, I tell you, I got it pretty close. <laughs> we had it for a little while. You know, we talk about a dollar eighty-seven, and now it's getting it's it's uh, on its way up. As you see, you see what's going on. I'm seeing four dollars. I'm seeing four fifty, uh, depending on where you buy. But we actually had it to a dollar eighty-seven, and we had it to a dollar fifty-two at one point. You know, different points. But we had we had the gasoline as low as it's been in, in a long time. So I don't know if I can guarantee a dollar, but I'll, I'll, we're going to get it as low as we can. And that's a big spur for the economy. The lower you get it, that's a big, big spur for the economy. Hey, Mr. President, it's Wesley Hunt here. How are you doing, sir? Hi, Wesley. I got a question for you. you were, you've been talking a lot about a no tax on tips. If you could kind of talk about that and what impact that would have, not just on the black community, but on everyone. I think it's a winner for all of us, and it's your idea. So if you could kind of talk about that, would be great, sir. So about a month ago, I was at my building in Las Vegas having dinner with some big people, business people that were, you know, planning some big developments, I think. And the waitress came over and said, how are you doing? How are you doing? And she said, oh, the government is after me all the time for my tax on tips. I said, really, if they do that? He said, yeah, they just made, Biden just made the regulations much tougher. And it's very tough now. It's tax on tips. And I said, how do you think, how would you like to be no tax on tips? Because first of all, it's very hard, you know, it's a very hard thing to control from the government standpoint. But the people are very unhappy about what's happening, especially the new regulations. And anyway, I just came up with the concept of no tax on tips. Let the people earn what they earn. And Anta, it has been so popular beyond anything i've never said anything like it so we have no tax on tips vote for trump no tax on tips hey mr president we have uh, ben carson's here with us hey mr president how you doing i'm ben i'm you know, good ben you know what you said about the uh regulations is so important at, at hud we were able to get rid of over two thousand regulations right it made it so much easier to get things done in general but i just want to encourage you to continue to speak out because the attacks on you have been absolutely ridiculous. And we're praying that God will give you the strength to bear it because you're standing in there for all of us. Well, the attacks have been unbelievable. What they say, and you know, they'll take a speech where I'll be out rallying a perfect speech for an hour and a half, two hours. We have big crowds. We had a hundred, over a hundred thousand people, 107 to be exact in Wildwood, New Jersey. We have 25,000 in the South Bronx. We have 88,000 in South Carolina. We have tremendous crowds. And you'll make a perfect speech. And this low-life Biden will take the speech, his people, him and his people, and they'll cut sentences out, cut words out, cut sentences out. Oh, Trump, look, he didn't make a good speech. He didn't make a good speech. And I do them largely without teleprompter. You know, I don't need a teleprompter. He can't read a teleprompter. But these people are nasty. They're really horrible people. They really are. It's a shame. It's a shame. They, I've, I've campaigned a lot over years, not even, you know, for myself, but, but in particular, I've campaigned against some pretty bad people for others. But there's never been anything like this. They make up things. Uh, they, you know, suckers and losers, which was never said. They know it. They make it up. They lit I mean, they literally make it up. You saw it with the 51 intelligence agents where they said that they got this done, where they said that uh, the Hunter laptop from hell was all Russia disinformation. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a total made-up thing. These people, uh, so you're right about that, Ben, when you say it. It really is a shame of shame. But the people understand it. We're leading in every poll. And we're leading every, every swing state. But, and, and one just came out against Nate Silver, the New York Times, that we have uh, close to a 66% chance of winning, which is a pretty good chance, I guess, when you think about it, right? Hey, Mr. Mr. President, you got time for two more questions? Yeah, sure. All right, hey, go ahead. Mr. President, Shelley Winter, uh, how are you, sir? 
How are you? Thank you very much. Um, I want to ask you, the debate is tomorrow. Do you think that you will get, what many of my listeners are asking me, do you think that you will get a fair shot from uh, Jake Tapper and Dana Bash? Do you fake, think you'll get tapper. fake Tapper? Right? <laughs> 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 you think you, oh, uh, and Don Bash. Repeat that question, please. What, what, do you think, do you think you're going to get a, a fair shot from uh, Jake Tapper and uh, Dana Bash tomorrow night? Well, I think it would be good for them if they did it. I think probably not. You know, it's very interesting. During the primary, uh, CNN covered me, you know, very, very tough. But they covered me all the time. And I won it very quickly. I won it in record uh, time. And Byron knows that. And Ben knows that. They were all there. And, and Wesley was there. Wesley, good job on television this morning, by the way. Oh, thank you, but sir. But they, they were all there. We run, won it in record so now I'm making my speech to, uh, you know, accept everything and to acknowledge the victories and all. Oh, and CNN started off, and then they ended. They, Jay Tapper said, all right, that's enough. We're not going to listen to him. So they cover the whole primary, but they don't cover my victory speech. So, you know, so I, am I going to get a fair? Probably not. But it would be very good for CNN. They're having a lot of ratings problems. I think it would be very good for CNN, actually, in terms of its credibility. It'll be interesting to see. All right, last question, Mr. President. Coach? Uh, yes, Ms. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute because I want to elaborate on this, what I would call a staged setup here. Because the questions, and these are business leaders out in Atlanta, and of course, uh, Representative Byron Donalds is from Florida, one of the most disastrous leadership states from that governor, DeSantis, out there, who wants to totally cut out um, critical race theory. He does not want Black people to know our history and so many other issues out in Florida. So this is ridiculous, the questions that were asked. The gas uh, prices under a dollar, and we most likely know gas prices would not go under a dollar. The other question about um, no tax on tips, that would be great for people that are working in those types of jobs where they won't get any uh, tax. And we know tax, uh, tips can come in many industries, you get them in the trades industry and such as plumbing and electrical and uh, HVAC systems. So it's not just uh, restaurant tips. There are tips in all and all other careers, careers as well. So that would be a good thing or not for everybody, as he mentioned. And also they talked about <laughs> which I thought was utterly ridiculous for the upcoming debate, presidential debate on what Jake Tapper and Dana Bash, what are they going to do to President Trump as if they are going to, I guess, put a noose around his neck or whatever, giving him a fair shot. Now, I'm just amazed at these business leaders hear what questions they're asking because they're not empowering questions for the black community. Here you are with uh, former president Donald Trump on the phone and that's the best you can do to ask him questions. What about questions that will empower the black community? He's talking about what all he's done in terms of employment and statistically speaking, Black America is at the bottom economically. And all of this goes back to almost 500 years of lack of justice, which we live under the injustice system, and a whole slew of problems within the Black community, that being unemployment, economic empowerment, being economically at the bottom of all ethnicities when it comes to economic empowerment. 
So why aren't we asking some questions that will yield economic empowerment in the Black community? I haven't heard that so far. You're talking about gas. That's going to, whatever the gas prices are, it's going to impact everybody. The tips will impact, and which one of the gentlemen said that? It'll impact everybody. And as far as a fair shot, I mean, you have to wait and see what's going to happen, but that's irrelevant at this point. You have these Black leaders here with a great opportunity to ask this president some relevant questions related specifically to empowering the Black community. And I haven't heard one yet. And these are Black leaders and you have this great opportunity. What about asking something about reparations that many of them tend to shy away from? The debt, the debt that is owed to the Black ancestors, descendants of the slaves that were brought over and beaten, tortured, raped, hung, all kinds of atrocities. And to this date, we're still fighting for justice. So what about that? Why don't you ask something relevant, specifically related, and don't allow him to escape like uh, the sitting Vice President Kamala Harris, who said, well, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm just going to do something for the Black community when she was asked about reparations. So that's what we need to be talking about, something that's going to collectively empower the Black community, because that's what's needed. So let's continue the conversation. And again, I'm Louise Hicks, your host of this podcast, Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour. Please subscribe and leave your comments, because I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this uh, so-called Black leaders here with this potential president that's possibly will be our next president. You have a great opportunity here. And from what I'm seeing so far and from what I'm hearing, you're blowing this opportunity because you're not asking any questions so far that specifically will empower the Black community. And we have to stop giving away our vote. We're just giving it away and predominantly to the Democrats. So now you have a Republican here and you're not asking him questions that's going to empower the black community collectively, specifically. So let's listen to the rest of it and see what other questions you're gonna ask. I'm curious to see. So let's move forward. Again, I'm Louise Hicks. Please subscribe, leave your comments, give it a thumb up, thumbs up and a like. And uh, let's see what else they have to say, because this is not empowering at all here. So far, nothing. So let's see what else they have to say. My question is, uh, in the black community, it's been made a big deal about how you have um, been kind of railroaded here as far as your court cases go and everything. Yeah. And the support that you'll receive uh, from the black community is kind of like a sympathetic kind of support because it's understood that we've received uh, similar uh, not even similar, but basically we've been railroaded since the day we came here. We, we felt that way, right? So if you can acknowledge that you're getting support from black people because of this, then we can kind of acknowledge that we have been getting railroaded. So my question is, what can you do about those Alvin Braggs on your side that have been doing such railroading from the time? Can we? What can we do about those Fonnie Willis's and Alvin Braggs that that are you know right now sending some poor black person to jail for some crime that they're doing? Well, you know, it's an amazing thing when this happened, wow. uh, and and as you saw, all the legal scholars say these are not cases. These are not cases that should be brought. It's just, it's just a terrible thing. It's weaponization. And it comes out of the White House. Even when it's city and state, it comes out of the White House. 
in order to attack a political opponent. But since that happened, the black support, I, I think my representatives will tell you this, the black support has gone through the roof. Yes, sir. And I guess they equate it to problems that they've had. But since this has happened, like uh, the mugshot, the mugshot is the best set. It's, yes, uh, it just beat Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra by a lot, by the way. Beat it by a lot. But that's <laughs> the, the number one mugshot of all time. It's, it's really an amazing thing. Since it happened, the support among the black community and the Hispanic community has skyrocketed. It's been amazing. Really been amazing. It's, it's been actually very nice to see. Mr. President, it, it's, it, it, in one way, in one way, you said, gee, isn't that too bad? But the truth is, it's really a lovely thing when I see that. I, we have great support now in the black community and in the Hispanic community. That's true. Great support. I'll say, before you leave, Mr. President, I'm a veteran, and we have several veterans here on the, uh, on the panel today. And uh, of the group of people I, that I say support you the most, the black veterans tend to be with you. So we're with you, sir. If you want to talk a little bit about what you've done with the veterans. Well, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was in fact, uh, if we did it, if we did it tomorrow, I'd be there. I'd be there despite tomorrow evening. It's going to be big, and they say maybe the biggest. Somebody said this will be the highest rated show of all time. I said, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not interested in listening to that. I actually said that to Byron. I'm not interested in hearing that. I just want to thank everybody for being there. You have my support. Uh, you know, we did a tremendous amount. I, I wrote it down just a little while ago, knowing I was going to make this call. Uh, achieved the lowest African American unemployment yeah. rate, the lowest ever. We delivered the largest small business tax cuts ever. We lifted 6.6 .6 billion people out of the poverty, which is the, a record. Uh, black Americans saw their largest increase in home ownership ever. We gave record funding for historically black colleges and universities. I actually got them taken care of. They were really in bad shape. And we passed it and we did that. We passed historic criminal justice reform, which nobody else could get. And when I left office, we had almost no inflation, virtually no inflation, which is a killer in the black community and every other community, frankly. And it's just a killer. We had absolutely the, the best, most beautiful. We had very little inflation. And now the inflation is a disaster. It's killing the black community and it's killing the country inflation. It's known as a country buster. So we did all those things and, uh, you know, nobody else, nobody else came close. And we'll do them again, and we'll do them even better. All right, thank Mr. You. President, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank see you tomorrow. Thank you all. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Hope, hope I see you. Okay, let's stop sharing. So please leave your comments. Again, I'm Louise Hicks, your host of Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour, and I coin myself the Mad Black Woman, and that is for motivated and determined to support and elevate my Black community to a higher level of consciousness so that we can make more informed decisions and we can take uh, accountability and responsibility for our own inappropriate actions that is a direct um, situation as a result of slavery. All of these symptoms, as Dr. Claude Anderson talks about, that are inappropriate behaviors, but it all stems from slavery. But that does not mean that we should not take responsibility and accountability. And once we do more digging and do a deep dive into our history, that will help us and support us in understanding the why, the root cause, so that we can do better because we really do need to do better. Now, these last few questions here, um, it was just really not, well, there wasn't anything to uplift and build the Black community. These questions that were asked about railroading uh, Black people going to prison, why not ask something specifically as to a bill? Because Black people have been asking for a bill from 
the current administration, Biden and Harris, because they did do a specific bill for the Asian community when there were some Asians that were uh, killed. And nobody should have to go through that. And Black people have been going through that for years, years and years and years. However, there is not a specific bill to protect Black people from this type of racially motivated behaviors that are going on now. Look at what happened to Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and many others who, Breonna Taylor, all of these people, why didn't you ask something about that, a bill specifically to protect Black people? That's what we need. We need something empowering. And if you ask for nothing, you're going to get nothing. That's what happened under the Obama administration. Black people got nothing specifically. However, LGBTQ got bills to protect. The Dreamers, Dream Act, bills to protect and so forth. But what specifically did Black people get out of that from the Obama administration? And we got to start demanding and asking. So let's, why not talk about some of those things, the police brutality, the reparations, the debt that is owed. Black people aren't asking for anything free. I mean, look who's benefiting from slavery. What if those benefits were cut off with all the people, white people that are benefiting from slavery? They're benefiting from it, from black people, our ancestors building this country. So, and the benefits are still there. And what are black people getting for all those atrocities, the rapes, the various mutilations, all of those atrocities, the hangings, and a lot of these, this stuff is still going on today. So let's give some, talk about something of substance that's going to be empowering. You had a great opportunity there and I just, I didn't see you take advantage of it and you're all business people. And it's like you're pandering and giving black people so you think you are. And Bill, Bill, uh, Ben Carson, you are a brilliant, brilliant surgeon and you're my age i'm 73 and you're about to be 73 so i would think that you would be more concerned about economic empowerment instead of sitting sitting there with these i guess most of them look like they may have been gen xers and that's what byron donald's is and of course he does not have any um I would say concern, like he's pretending to talk about the black family structure when he doesn't even have a black family. So we, we have to use our critical thinking skills. And this is to the black people. We have to start asking these potential leaders of this country, the United States of America, what are you going to offer us for our vote? And I didn't hear that in this conversation, this so-called uh, round table. I didn't hear it. So we need to go back to the drawing board and start asking the right questions of these people that are running for office. And if they're, they're not going to give you something for your vote, reciprocity, you, you, why would we vote for them? We got to stop that buying into this Democratic Party when they give nothing in return, but go to your church every four years and then you don't see them anymore. So we got to stop that. And with this Republican, I know a lot of Black people now are reconsidering the Democratic uh, Party, particularly when Joe Biden tells and insult Black people, well, if you're not Black, <laughs> if you don't vote for me, you're not Black. That was an insult and I didn't vote for either one because I consider them two snakes in a barrel. And I don't vote for the lesser of two evils because I don't want any evil. If I can avoid evil, I don't want any evil. So why would we consider voting for an evil, particularly people that are saying you're Christian people? Why are you voting for an evil? 
So these these people, I'm sure they get together and laugh at some of us who are not using our critical thinking skills and who are SOS, what I would call stuck on stupid. We got to start doing some research and reading so you can see for yourself that they're liars. These people are lying. Both the Biden current administration as well as Donald Trump. The unemployment rate can't be what he's talking about because black people are still at the bottom of the economic barrel when it comes to income levels at the bottom. So if black people are so employed, why is that? And in terms of housing and so forth, and Ben Carson was the, uh, he was over the housing and development. But black people still have low, a lower rate of home ownership. And you can go look up these stats for yourself. So it's ridiculous when these people sit here and make a mockery of what's going on in the black community and within collectively within the black community. And I know we have some work to do as well, as Dr. George Frazier says, we have to start collecting those dots and spending our money wisely. We have over about $1.6 trillion coming through our hands every year as black people. So we gotta start spending wiser too. And as I said, that's my take on this. So please tell me what your thoughts are about this conversation and how you think um, we should go. And in terms of the veterans, they talked about that too, the veterans and what he's going to do. There are so many homeless veterans in L.A. on Skid Row. Some of those people are veterans. They came back from war, many of them, and they couldn't even get housing because of discrimination. They couldn't get jobs because of discrimination, and that's still going on. And I can tell you one quick story about myself buying a house, my then husband, us buying a home in Downey, California. And at that time, 1999, they had to remove some information, some contractual information from the deed restriction because no black person could move into that community when those homes were built in the late 1940s. I think mine may have been built in 1948 or 49. And no black people could even live in that, in that area because of the deed restrictions. So there's a lot of work to be done. And if you're not asking the right question and you're not holding these politicians accountable, they're going to continue to do what they're doing to Black people. And you're going to continue to be at the bottom of the economic spectrum. And we need to do something about that. We need to start telling them and asking the right questions. And then telling them, you're not meeting the needs of the Black community. You're focusing on generic stuff. What's going to help and uplift everybody else? And Kamala Harris specifically said she wasn't going to do anything specifically for Black people when she was running for president. Go look it up. All you got to do is Google it or do a search on YouTube University, and you will find what she said. And you will find what Joe Biden said on the Breakfast Club to Charlemagne, the God, about if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. So with that said, again, I'm Louise Hicks. And um, please subscribe, leave your comments, and give it a like, a thumbs up. And what are your thoughts on this? And I'll be back to give some thoughts on the presidential uh, debate that's going to be happening. As they said, they did this the day before. So stay tuned for more because I will be coming back with my thoughts about the presidential uh, debate. We'll see how that goes. So again, Louise Hicks here, please subscribe. Thank you all for your support. I really appreciate you. Love you much. And 
let's let's be more attentive and more focused. I can't tell you who to vote for. You vote for whoever you wish, but at this point, I won't be voting for either because they're not, they're just being uh, all this bogus stuff. I haven't seen anything specifically that black people will get for our votes. So demand something for your vote, just like the other ethnic groups and so forth are doing. Start demanding something and stop giving away your vote for free. And if they're not gonna talk about empowering black people, why vote for them? I don't care who they are. So thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Take care and we will talk about the presidential debate next. Have a good one.